So today we'll be talking about TTM2 trial. This was published in June edition of NEGM in 2021. The article is titled as Hypothermia versus Normothermia after out of hospital cardiac arrest. Most of the international guidelines they recommend hypothermia protocol in patients who are resuscitated from cardiac arrest and are in coma. It is said that this prevents hypoxic ischemic brain damage. These guidelines have come after the famous or uh, the landmark 2002 trials. One was the Haka trial. The Haka trial said that the patients who are resuscitated from cardiac arrest due to ventricular fibrillation, mild therapeutic hypothermia uh, increased the rate of favorable neurologic outcomes and decreased the mortality. Another trial which was published in the same year found that treatment with moderate hypothermia for a period of 12 hours improved outcomes in patients with coma after resusceration from cardiac events. Also, the trial found that there was no adverse events associated with moderate hypothermia and there were no arrhythmias associated with this moderate hypothermia. So, if we look at the EHA recommendations, they say that all the patients who had out of hospital cardiac arrest or in hospital cardiac arrest were all the cardiac rhythms, patients should be on hypothermia protocol with the temperatures ranging between 32 to 36 degrees Celsius for at least a period of 24 hours. It is useful to have a look at the ESC guidelines for the management of STEMI which were published in 2017. The guidelines said that unconscious STEMI patients admitted to the critical care after out of car hospital cardiac arrest had a high risk of death and neurological deficits are very common in the patients who survive. Uh, they recommend therapeutic hypothermia with the aim of temperature between 32 to 36 degrees Celsius for at least 24 hours. The post resuscitation care guidelines from the European Resuscitation Council and European Society of Intensive Care Medicine which were published in 2021 state that patients who had out of hospital cardiac arrest or in hospital cardiac arrest and have coma after the resuscitation from cardiac arrest should be maintained on therapeutic hypothermia with temperature between 32 to 36 degrees Celsius and fever of more than 37.7 degrees Celsius should be avoided for at least three days after patients have been revived. So what are the possible mechanisms by which hypothermia helps in preventing hypoxic ischemic brain damage in patients with coma after cardiac arrest? It is said that hypothermia helps by decreasing the metabolism it decreases the oxygen consumption. Also, there are multiple chemical and physical mechanisms by which hypothermia helps. These include retardation of destructive enzymatic reactions, suppression of free radical production, protection of the fluidity of lipoprotein membranes, reduction of oxygen demand in low flow regions, reduction of intracellular acidosis, inhibition of biosynthesis, release and uptake of excitatory neurotransmitters. So this TTM2 trial is a large trial in which patients with out of hospital cardiac arrest, presumably of cardiac cause, were included in this study and the strategy of hypothermia protocol that is targeted temperature of 33 degrees Celsius was compared with the strategy of normothermia. Also, early treatment of fever was done in the patients in whom normothermia protocol was adopted. The primary outcome in this trial was death from any cause at 6 months and secondary outcome was functional outcomes at 6 months. So what it did was they included 1900 patients with out of hospital cardiac arrest and they divided them into two arms, hypothermia arm and the normothermia. Targeted temperature in the hypothermia arm was 33 degrees Celsius and targeted temperature in the normothermia arm was less than 37.5 degrees Celsius. In the hypothermia arm, surface cooling or intravascular cooling was done to attain the temperature of 33 degrees Celsius. In the normothermia arm, temperature was only brought down that is cooling was only done when temperature was more than 37.5 degrees Celsius. So why are we bringing down the temperature when it is more than 37.5 degrees Celsius? This is because fever is a known risk factor or unfavorable neurologic outcomes after cardiac arrest. We are supposed to avoid fever in patients who have cardiac arrest. So the baseline characteristics of the patient in both the groups that is hypothermia group and the normothermia group were comparable. Patients 
in both the arms had a mean age of 64 years 80% of patients in both the arms were males one third of the patients had history of diabetes one fifth of the patients had history of diabetes mellitus 15% of the patients had history of myocardial infarction 15% of patients had history of PCI 10% of the patients had history of CABG history of heart failure was present in approximately 10% patients 80% of the patients received CPR from the bystander in 75% of the patients first rhythm was shockable while in 25% of the patients first rhythm was non shockable when I say shockable rhythm I mean ventricular fibrillation and ventricular tachycardia ventricular fibrillation was present in 75% of the patients who had shockable rhythm ventricular tachycardia was present in 60% of the patients who had shockable rhythm among the patients with non shockable rhythm 10% of patients had asystole and 10% of patients had pulseless electrical activity. Median time to ROSC in both the arms was 25 minutes. STEMI was present in 40% of the patients and shock was present in approximately one third of the patients. So what they found was primary outcomes were similar in both the groups. That is death from any cause at six months was similar in both the groups. It was 50% in both groups. It is an important data that is cardiac arrest survivors have a 50% mortality rate at 6 months. This is an important data which comes from this trial. 50% of the patients had poor functional outcome at 6 months in both the groups that is in normothermia group and hypothermia group. There was no difference in both the groups as far as the bleeding, skin complications, pneumonia and sepsis is concerned. There were certain problems or issues associated with hypothermia which were seen in this trial. We need to be aware about these when we are using hypothermia protocol for our patients. And these include arrhythmia, more requirement of paralytics, longer length of mechanical ventilation and higher unexpected severe adverse events. Arrhythmia was more common in the patients who received hypothermia protocol. Arrhythmia in these subset of patients can either be because of electrolyte disturbance or it can be because of the direct effect of temperature on the myocytes or it can be because of alteration in the fluid status. So what we learned from this TTM2 trial was that patients who had out of hospital cardiac arrest of presumed cardiac etiology and were in coma after the cardiac arrest targeted hypothermia did not lower the mortality at six months. In this study, majority of the patients, that is 75% of the patients enrolled had shockable rhythm. That is, they had either ventricular fibrillation or they had ventricular tachycardia. While only 25% of the patients had non-shockable rhythm, that is asystole or pulseless electrical activity. In the year 2019, Hyperion trial was published. What they wanted to do was they looked at the impact of hypothermia protocol in patients with out of hospital cardiac arrest with non shockable rhythm that is pulseless electrical activity or asystole. In this trial, approximately 600 patients were enrolled and patients were divided into two arms. One arm was hypothermia arm. In, the, in this arm, targeted temperature was 33 degrees Celsius and the other arm targeted temperature was 37 degrees Celsius. This was a smaller trial. It included 600 patients and at 90 days, it was found that there was similar mortality in both the groups who received normothermia or hypothermia. However, they found that in patients who had been on hypothermia protocol, there was significant improvement in neurologic outcomes at 90 days. Also, the trialist stated that there was no significant harmful effect of hypothermia. The capital chill trial was presented in ACC 2021 and it was a randomized double blinded trial and this included patients with out of hospital cardiac arrest. In this trial, two strategies of hypothermia were compared to each other. One arm was guideline recommended hypothermia that is temperature less than 34 degrees Celsius and the other arm was moderate hypothermia arm that is temperature less than 31 degrees Celsius. 
It was a small trial. It included 367 patients who had been resuscitated from the cardiac arrest and were comatose. In this trial, cooling was done using an endovascular device. The endovascular device was nothing but a temperature controlled saline balloon and which was placed near the heart and it was inserted by a vein. In half of the patients, the cooling was done to 31 degrees Celsius and half of the patients cooling was done to 34 degrees Celsius. Patients were kept in hypothermia protocol for 24 hours and after that they were re to normal temperature at the rate of 0.25 degrees Celsius per hour. The primary endpoint in this trial was a composite of death and poor neurologic outcomes at 6 months. The trialists found that there was no significant difference in the primary endpoints in between the two arms and there was no difference in the individual components of the primary outcome that is death was similar in both the arms and poor neurological outcomes at 6 months were similar in both the arms. Patients on 31 degrees Celsius had longer ICU stay and there was no difference between the two arms as far as the pneumonia, seizures, requirement of renal replacement therapy and stroke are concerned. So while we are discussing TTM2 trial, it is important to remember the findings of TTM1 trial. It was published in 2013 in NEGM and the trialists in this trial had found that among 950 patients of out of hospital cardiac arrest, when two temperature strategies of 33 degrees Celsius and 36 degrees Celsius was compared, there was 50% mortality in both the groups and there was no difference in the neurological outcomes. Also, there was no harm with the temperature of 33 degrees Celsius. While we are talking about the trials on hypothermia protocol cardiac arrest patients, it is important to know that a trial, ice cap trial is ongoing. It is expected to be completed in 2024. This trial is supposed to enroll 1800 patients of out of hospital cardiac arrest in whom ROSC has been achieved and these patients are in coma. The question we are trying to answer with this trial is what is the optimal cooling duration which is going to be helpful to prevent hypoxic ischemic brain damage in these subset of patients. The trial will be looking at the functional outcomes at six months in these patients. Summarizing what we learned from this TTM2 trial is that in patients who had out of hospital cardiac arrest, therapeutic hypothermia did not lower the mortality and it did not improve functional outcomes. It is as good as normothermia and it can increase the chances of arrhythmia in the patients and prolong ICU stay. So that was the presentation guys. Thank you.